A skinwalker is a creature of legend that can be found in many cultures. The most well known of these legends is that shared by the Navajo people of the western United States. The Navajo share stories of an evil witch who can shapeshift both in body and voice and usually take the form of a loved one or a close companion in an attempt to dupe the victim into trusting them. They are also frequently said to disguise themselves as wildlife in order to avoid detection. But when their mask slips, the stories that witnesses have to tell are incredibly chilling. Each of these stories are presented as true by the original authors. They are disturbing. Discretion is advised. Number one. The most eerie laugh I've ever heard. Being from the Navajo Nation, I have seen lots of crazy shit. Anyone not from here is most likely not to believe me. I have stories about skinwalkers, kachina dolls coming to life, Bigfoot, werewolves, and some type of winged beast. But I think the most creepy is one of my skinwalker stories. So this story takes place in the early 2000s, when I was a teenager. My cousin had just had a baby, and her husband was called out for a job that would take a couple of weeks. My cousin asked if I would stay with her for the two weeks to help her with the baby and work around the house. I was there for a few days, and everything was pretty uneventful, until the middle of the second week. At night we would hear someone knocking on different sides of the trailer. Keep in mind my nearest neighbour was about five miles away. This continued for three nights in a row. The fourth night is when things take a turn for the worst. The night starts with the knocking, but it progresses to scratching. Worried that someone was trying to break in, I summoned the courage to go outside and confront whatever or whoever was messing with us. We only caught a shadow of whatever it was as it ran behind the trailer. I ran around yelling at it. You better run because I'm going to call the cops. Or something to that extent. It is so fast I could not believe it. As I chase it to the front of the trailer, it runs through the clothesline. This is where it gets even crazier. It ran towards a utility post and climbs up it, clutching something in its hands, and begins the most eerie laugh I have ever heard. It jumps back down, dropping whatever it was holding and runs towards the window of the trailer, as if to peek in. My cousin was inside holding the baby. I run to the window and look, and to my amazement, it has disappeared. I run inside and tell my cousin it is gone. Needless to say, we didn't sleep well for the rest of the night. The next morning I go outside and look at the window where I had last seen it. I look at the ground and see bare footprints. However, these were no ordinary footprints. The best way I can describe it was a human footprint with claws, like a dog or a wolf. I go to the utility pole and find what it had been clutching the night before. It was my niece's tiny little shirt. It goes without saying, we spent the next few days in the safety of my mother's home, off 
the reservation. Number two, delivery service. My father owns a small delivery service that operates out of Farmington, New Mexico. We mostly deliver small packages out to the middle of nowhere that are too much of a hassle for the larger delivery companies to bother with. My dad is the only employee, and we have a few pickup trucks and a trailer. One day, we get a delivery out to Window Rock, Arizona on the Navajo Reservation, about two hours from Farmington. My dad gets the call for the job while he is chilling with his Navajo friend, Travis, and his girlfriend. Travis mentioned how he's got family in Window Rock and that he hasn't seen them in ages and suggests they go with him. I was about six or seven at the time, and it was the summer time, so dad decides we'll go down together. He can do his delivery real quick, then while Travis sees his family, we can go check out the window rock, a big rock face with a large hole in it that goes to the other side. We had the convoy in separate trucks, since my dad's was loaded with freight. We decided to bring along some walkie-talkies so we could communicate with one another. We spend our time in Window Rock. Everything is generally uneventful and we start heading home along the highway with my dad and I in front and Travis and his girlfriend in their truck behind us. I honestly don't remember most of the Window Rock trip. But this next part I can never forget. We were somewhere on the highway between Window Rock and Gallup, New Mexico. It had just rained earlier in the day and the road was kind of slick, so we were taking it pretty slow. On the left of the highway, there is nothing but sandstone cliffs, and on the right, there is a huge field separated from the road by a small barbed wire fence. We crest the top of the hill, and down at the bottom of the hill, we see what appears to be a very large dog, sitting back on its haunches in the middle of the road, facing the cliffs. My dad calls over the radio. Hey Travis, do you see that big ass dog? Travis starts yelling back over the radio. That's not a dog. Speed up right now and hit it. He almost sounds hysterical. He just keeps screaming. Hit it. You have to hit it. Please, please, hit that fucking thing right now. So my dad starts to speed up. And as we get a bit closer, I can begin to see it a little more clearly. It is covered in this brown, wiry, matted hair that appears to have dried blood all over it. It's still facing the cliffs. But the moment our headlights hit it, it turns and looks at us. I don't know how else to describe it other than a mix between a bear and a human's face. It looks twisted and distorted and almost in pain. As we get closer to this thing, we start to realise it's actually fucking huge. Though it was still sitting on its haunches, it is about shoulder height with the hood of the truck. We get literally inches from hitting it when it lets out a scream that sounds like someone screaming as their lungs were filling with water and it leaps backwards towards the field, landing just on our side of the barbed wire fence. Then, with another leap, it was gone from sight. Travis comes over the radio again. Holy shit! Keep driving! We have to get out of here. 
We have to go faster. He kept repeating that last part. We have to get out of here. And we have to go faster. Pretty soon, we are speeding like crazy. And just as we start to come near the outskirts of Gallup, we get pulled over. Travis pulls his truck over with us. Naturally, this makes the cop, a Navajo man himself, very on edge. And he immediately asks Travis why he felt the need to pull over as well. Travis says, We just saw a skinwalker a few miles back and it's been following us. The officer immediately turns white, stammers something about a verbal warning, gets in his car and takes off. We do the same. We didn't see anything else that night, but when we got home, Travis refused to let us leave without taking some kind of Navajo totem thing that was supposed to keep it away. Number three, don't. I was a kid when this happened. My uncle and I were finishing up chopping and gathering firewood for my grandmother because it was getting dark. Driving back on the dirt road around 30 miles an hour, give or take 5 miles an hour, I had this awful sense of being watched. Before I could turn to look out my passenger window, my uncle quickly shouted, Don't! I completely froze. My heart felt like it was beating out of my chest and completely stopped when I heard a tap, tap on my window. My uncle sped up and was loudly praying in my native language. I didn't know what was going on and thought it was over till our truck suddenly dipped from the bed. My uncle then started saying, Look at me. Don't turn away. Over and over. Then I heard it again. Tap. Tap. But from the window behind me. It was getting harder for me to breathe, and I wanted to cry. A minute or two passed and the truck dipped again. My uncle looked around and sighed. It was quiet besides the truck and the road. He looked at me and said, We will ask your father to do a prayer in the morning so the evil will forget our faces. I remember curling up on the seat and just staring at the radio, watching the time, listening to my uncle sing an old prayer till we got to my grandmother's house. I hope you enjoyed those stories as much as I did. I plan to cover the legend of the skinwalkers a bit more in-depth in future. The stories that people have to tell about them are absolutely terrifying and I would love to explore this phenomenon further. You know, living halfway across the world from a Navajo nation doesn't really help with getting genuine accounts. But I'll find a way. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And don't get spooked. <laughs>